My name is Bill Kinney, and this is Using Mathematica for Ordinary Differential Equations, Part 6. It's going to be the first video where we make use of some new Mathematica functionality, a new function called dSolveValue that's new for Mathematica 10 and beyond. So far, we've used dSolve, and we've seen that its usage is a little bit clunky. We've had to do some copying and pasting when the formula ended up being complicated. When you use dSolveValue in a certain special way, we will be able to avoid the copying and pasting. I didn't even know about this command until a couple weeks ago, so thanks go to David Arnold from the College of the Redwoods. He watched my videos, did a little research, and found dSolve value, pointed it out to me. In order to understand it a little bit better, we're going to have to have a brief discussion about kind of a confusing topic, what are called pure functions in mathematics. I'll try to keep that as simple as possible. We'll continue using manipulate, show, vector, plot, and plot to plot graphs of solutions and slope fields. Also in this video, we'll use exclusions to rid graphs of vertical asymptotes, and when necessary, make use of plot range along with all to plot graphs more fully when necessary. But before we start that content, I want to have a note, give you a note about the animation from the last video, number five. For this autonomous differential equation, where the right-hand side only depends on y, and for this fixed but arbitrary initial condition, um, what I want to emphasize is something I've emphasized before, but uh, I want to emphasize it in kind of a new way here. So what we've got here is the slope field for that differential equation. Uh, it's generated, again, using show and vector plot. Plot generates the graph of the function itself, and we can put those together with show. If we put those inside manipulate as the first argument of the manipulate, that will make an animation as we have two animation parameters that change, b, which is the right endpoint of the interval that we plot over, and y0, which is the y-coordinate of the initial condition of y of 0 equals y sub 0. Let's go ahead and move the b slider all the way to the right so we see the entire graph. Here, the initial value of y0 in the animation is 2, so we have a vertical axis intercept at 2. But now I can change this. We do see the slope field because the equation is autonomous is constant in slope along horizontal lines where y is constant. And because of that, horizontal translations of solutions are new solutions. The thing I want to emphasize that's slightly different here is that um, if I change the initial condition, not only does the vertical axis intercept change, that's what I emphasized before, but also it is a horizontal translation of the original solution, at least if I don't cross an equilibrium solution. It's a little bit more clear if I make the plotting window bigger, like going from negative 8 to 8 here. I'll change the starting value of b to be negative 7.99 and go up to 8. Right, make b go all the way to the right. On this bigger horizontal window here, now if I change the initial condition here, the y-intercept, it is a little bit more clear that I get horizontal translations of the original graph. As long as I don't pass through an equilibrium solution, there is an equilibrium at y equals 3. Once I pass that, then I get a graph that's not a horizontal translation of the original solution. However, if I stay above y equals 3, these are horizontal translations of each other. If I go below y equals 0 into negative territory, that's also not a horizontal translation of the original, but these are horizontal translations of each other. All right, on to new content. Oh, and by the way, here I have some writing that, that explains what I just said verbally, if you want to pause the video. In using dSolve value, we're going to do a warm-up example. All right, we've got this initial value problem. This is a simple example because this is a pure antiderivative problem. You can just integrate the cosine function to find your general solution for a function whose derivative is always the cosine function. If you want the graph to go through the origin, I hope you think about that for a second and see the answer is the sine function. Here's how we use dSolve to solve this y prime of t double equals cos t, must be a capital cos in Mathematica, put a comma, initial condition, y of 0 double equals 0, I put that inside curvy braces and a comma in between, then do another comma, y of t, another comma, t, this produces the answer sine of t, though the output is in kind of a strange form, that's what's called a rule in Mathematica when you see an arrow like this. It's also inside curvy braces. You might be saying, why doesn't it just say sine of t? That is, after all, the answer. Well, dsolve value will do that as one nice thing it does. The input is still the same. I just changed dsolve to dsolve value. And now the output is just outputted as sine of t. Okay, so that's one way it's nice. Um, 
Here's another way of nice and this is going to be useful for us. Um, as far as not having to do copying and pasting, you know, even if this was a complicated expression, you might say we'd have to do some copying and pasting. What we're going to do first of all is a little strange. We're going to get rid of the of t here. Just put a y here. In a sense, it's kind of like we're solving for the function rather than the function value. I'm also going to go ahead and give this thing a name. I'm going to call it SOL for solution and put an equal sign here. I'm going to store whatever the output of this thing is in a variable I'm calling SOL. What is that output? It's also kind of strange. Function, square brackets, t inside curvy braces, sine t, a comma there. What is that thing? <clears throat> That's called a pure function in Mathematica. And in a nutshell, to keep it as simple as possible, a pure function is just a way of representing a function, in this case the sine function, that you can use without giving the function a name, like f or g or h. Now you might be saying, is that really such a big deal? Should I use pure functions? Well, yes, in some cases they are useful. Let me emphasize that this is the sine function by evaluating it at, for, ex for example, pi over 6. Use square brackets and put a pi over 6 to the right of it here. This will evaluate the sine function at pi over 6, which you should remember is 1 half. Also, since I stored this pure function in SOL, I can do SOL of pi over 6 and also get 1 half. I could plug in pi over 3, get square root of 3 over 2. And I could plot this function, SOL of t, t going, say, from 0 to 2 pi to plot the sine function. Okay? So this is giving me a thing that's, again, called a pure function, but I can use that as a regular function if I do this. It's a little confusing because you might be wondering why don't I do this kind of thing or this kind of thing. Turns out you don't want to when the output is a pure function. You don't want to do that. All right, let's go down to our main example now. All right, we want to use dsol value in the way we just did. For this <clears throat> arbitrary but, well, this fixed but arbitrary initial value problem, it's still an autonomous equation because the right-hand still, side still just depends on y. So again, the slope field is going to be constant along horizontal lines. Um, dy dt equals y square, squared. We're going to, again, make the slope field with, with manipulate, show, vector, plot, and plot. I'm going to show you how to dis discard vertical asymptotes with exclusions, and then we're going to have to use plot range and all um, because the graph doesn't show up fully in a nice way fully. Um, before we get into mathematical usage, here's the way you'd solve the differential equation with separation of variables. Again, maybe you know about this, maybe you don't. If you don't, you should look it up. Take the differential equation, separate the y and the t like this, integrate both sides, ultimately do some algebra. To get the c value here for this general solution to be 1 over the initial condition, 1 over y0, as long as you don't divide by 0. <clears throat> if you simplify that thing, it simplifies to this, and that expression actually, sort of like magic, works even if y0, the initial value, is 0. It gives you the constant function, the equilibrium solution, y always equals 0. For all t, its graph is a horizontal line. On the other hand, if y0 is not 0, this function has a vertical asymptote that's going to occur because of this algebra that you see here at t equals 1 over y0 as long as y0 is not 0. Again, if y0 is 0, then there's no vertical asymptote. It's just a horizontal line. That's the solution. All right. We're going to use dsol value. I can use it as is here to see the formula. There it is. And it's part of a pure function. But you might say, well, again, don't I have to copy and paste that? The answer is no, I could do this. I could do sol equals. I have an ulterior motive, though, for doing something different. <clears throat> I'm going to use the writing assistant over here and use the subscript button and use a Greek letter, phi, by typing escape, ph, escape. That's a phi. Mathematicians tend to call it phi. Physicists tend to call it phi. I asked a Greek professor, is it phi or phi? He said either. Uh, I didn't ask about phi or fum, though, so I guess I'm going to stick with the mathematician's usage and call it phi. I'm going to put y0, the initial value of y, at time 0 as a subscript, put an underscore. That's going to store the output of this, this pure function in this variable, so to speak. 
Uh, my ulterior, part of my ulterior motive here, by the way, is that mathematicians often use phi as the function name for solutions of differential equations. There's another reason I'm going to use that that I'm not going to tell you. Down here, if I'm going to use it, notice I've got show, vector, plot, plot, all inside of manipulate. I only have one animation parameter, the initial condition. T is going to get plotted from negative 4 to 4. I need to put the function name, which <clears throat> I can type as phi sub y0 without an underscore, and then put an of t here inside square brackets. Whoops, get rid of that. This will plot it. It's not quite ideal in a couple ways. One is it doesn't go up very far or down very far. That's where the plot range all comes in when you see that kind of thing. If you add this option, plot range all, that should fix that. Yep, it goes up and down further. I don't know why it doesn't do that as a default. And then we want to get rid of that vertical asymptote. Exclusions can get rid of that. Exclusions, arrow, inside curvy braces, put t double equals 1 over y0 because that was where the uh, vertical asymptote occurred. That'll get rid of that vertical asymptote so it looks nicer. And we change y0 and we get new vertical, we get horizontal translations of the original graph by changing that initial condition. Um, I should say here to close off this video, something else. <clears throat> this is an important but technical point. Technically speaking, we should only consider the part of the solution function on the one interval here that contains zero, meaning this interval over here, not this interval over here, uh, and ignore this part of the graph that's on the other side of the vertical asymptote. Why? Why should you ignore that other part? There are basically two reasons for this that I want to just briefly mention. First of all, there's a physical reason. If this is a model of a phys physical situation where y in this case is going off to infinity and finite time, it's blowing up, uh, you should not expect somehow the physical quantity to come back from infinity, okay? Like this, okay? Instead, we should probably consider the system to be broken, like a broken spring, if this was modeling a spring, for example. All right, that's one reason we should sort of ignore the part that's after the vertical asymptote. A second reason is more mathematical. If we, well, I guess it's physical too. If we allow pieces of the solution like this over here on the other side of the vertical asymptote to be part of the solution to the IVP, then you destroy what's called mathematical uniqueness of our solution because basically you could pick any curve over here that um, follows the slope field to be part of your solution to the original initial value problem. And we want solutions of, of initial value problems to be unique. So that, in a nutshell, is why you should sort of ignore the part over there, although I don't typically necessarily want to get rid of its graph. And with that, I'll end this video.